Hi, I'm Roger Mishrad. At Franklin Templeton Investments, we believe that citizens need to be informed about the resources that can help make higher education more affordable. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health. Life is better healthy. The New Jersey Education Association. New Jersey's credit unions. Banking you can trust. NJ Best. New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. Turn a dream into a degree. Fedway Associates. Community Education Centers. And by the Northeast Regional Council of Carpenters. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go you right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, Steve Adubato in the uh, Senate chamber in the State House, and we are pleased to be joined by the Speaker of the Assembly, Vincent Prieto. Good to see you, Mr. Speaker. It's great to be here, Steve. Um, I asked you this last time we were here, you like this chamber, the Senate chamber? I, it's a nice chamber, but I think <laughs> mine's actually a little bit prettier, and I'm, uh, I feel at home over there. Is that true? Yeah. Tom Kane said that he thought, uh, Tom Kane Jr. said he thought this was very special. Well, I guess they call it the House of Lords, but I'm the leader of the People's House, and, well, I, I, enjoy, and I enjoy that tremendously. I love it. Uh, well, no matter what house you're, in, uh, you're involved in, or which house, you've got to deal with um, the fact that it's the 24th of February we're taping, and on the 23rd, the governor's uh, budget address is actually about two hours away. Mm -hmm. And that budget address, uh, what do you think? You think there'll be some reference to the court decision that was um, made yesterday by Judge Mary Jacobson that said, hey, the state has to put in $1.56 billion into the pension fund? Yeah, potentially we'll, we'll hear about it. And listen, it is something that we know was out there, and it's an obligation. You're not surprised? This, this, I'm really not surprised, to be honest with you. I, I've always thought that there, there was an obligation. Once we passed legislation that we made uh, sort of a commitment of paying one-seventh into it over a seven-year period to get to fully funding, that was something we should have done. We sent a budget last year that included uh, for it. Uh, obviously, it did not make it. We had included their uh, funding for it. Um, Fun, uh, to be clear, so we're, uh, folks can follow this. Mm -hmm. This is for the Public Employees Pension Fund, which is right now in the hole for, is it 50, 60 billion dollars? It's, it's actually 37 billion dollars, the unfunded liability for the pension portion. 37 billion? 37 billion, that's the number. But looking beyond that, the number gets bigger. Yeah, what, what it is, if you were today to be able to fully fund it, you would need $37 billion, and that, that's the number. You may hear different numbers. It depends what, I have the, heard what, different numbers. what the math that you use, but the number that is actually from the committee uh, that the governor had put together, this, right. uh, their number is $37 billion. Okay, so it has been argued, and the governor says this, and John Bramnick, the Republican leader, says it, that the Democrats put a budget together mm -hmm. to fund that portion of the pension payment by putting in a millionaire's tax, and they said there's no way in the world the governor would support that, or that they would support it, and that all you're doing is driving people away by supporting more taxes. And, 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 I, and I wouldn't uh, correlate it that way. We had a millionaire's tax in our budget, and normally a tax like that would be for somewhat of property tax relief. That included in the whole budget it included the pension payment that was supposed to be $2.25 billion. It included. So you can't just say that one source of revenue is what's paying that directly, but it would have kept us to our obligations, as the court now has said, you are, you're basically responsible and need to come up with $1.6 billion. So, so, Mr. Speaker, how does it happen now? I mean, given the fact that the courts have said, and obviously, you know, I shouldn't say obviously, but likely, um, there'll be an appeal. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court likely will decide this situation. Right. But money has to come from somewhere. Absolutely. So say the response is, okay, 
if there isn't going to be a millionaire's tax, because the governor told us in public television, in an interview I did with him and right. many others, he's not going to support a millionaire's tax. Say there has to be cuts. And say those are cuts to public employees. Say those are cuts to charity care, to urban hospitals. Right. Cuts to police and fire and... Yeah, we, listen, budgeting is about priority, so we have to figure out how we have to come up with, you know, to live within our means. And I've said it, and I've said it on this show, and I said it, I think, a year ago, before the, we had problems with our budget, that my concerns was, that's why tax cuts were not the way to go, that we have a revenue problem in the state of New Jersey. We have not grown our budget, you know, our revenues coming in as other states surrounding us. We have lagged behind them, and the expectation that have been put forward, we have not met. So we have to grow our economy, and that's how you get out of this. Growing our economy and being able to do the things and figuring out how do we get revenues. And listen, property tax relief for, for our residents, it, it needs to come from somewhere. And when we talk about that upper echelon, and we were talking people making over a million dollars, that was a, a for that amount over a million dollars. Not, not the first dollar, but the first dollar after a million After dollars. a million would have helped our budget. And now if you want to take that and correlate it to our pension, that's part of our obligations. We spend over $12 billion in education, you know, K through 12. So these are all things that we have mm -hmm. already in our budget. You can pick and choose and point to one revenue as that's going to be the source, but that's not fair. It's overall all of our obligations. Mr. Speaker, can I get a quick answer to this. I know we're taping on the 24th of February, and by the time this airs, it may be solved. It may not. But when I asked the governor about this in our interview on the 22nd of December um, about the Transportation Trust Fund issue, he said, uh, we're working on it. Right. He said he was working closely with you and the mm -hmm. Senate president. And I said, well, you know, could you tell me about it? He said, no, because we don't negotiate in public. Right. I'm sure you saw that. Yeah. Um, you don't negotiate in public either, but you have said many times Right. You support the idea of raising the gas tax. Yeah. I believe we have the second lowest, second lowest, second in the lowest gas tax uh, levy in the nation. The governor has said he does not support a gas tax hike. So how the heck are you negotiating if he doesn't support a gas tax hike? You support a gas tax hike, and the transportation trust fund, which funds the roads and bridges and mass transit, running out of money on June thirtieth. And you've got to get a source of funding, and that's the major source of funding. Yeah. Am I missing something? Well, I don't know what governor you spoke to, but the one that I've been speaking to, he has said that everything's on the table. Including, including a gas tax a hike? Gas, including a gas tax. And there was other things that he was looking at potentially to get done and coupled with that. But listen, at the end of the day, again, I'll go back to, we need revenue sources. And if you getting in from the current structure, $1.2 billion, and after June 30th of this year, every penny is going to pay down debt. You have nothing. Debt on the Transportation Trust on Fund. On the trans Transportation Trust Fund, and none of that money you're really going to get cleared back into the 2030s, mid-2030s, you have a problem. How do you fund our crumbling road infrastructure? You need a sustainable uh, source of income in the gas tax, where it is, and especially uh, uh, um, where gas is today. If you Take it from there, constitutionally dedicated, put it back into our roads. It, it, you have to look at it and compare apples to apples. The average driver pays in uh, repairs to their vehicle due to roads about $600 a year. That would help that. It would help you alleviate congestion, get, you know, save on gas, uh, getting quicker, not be stalled in traffic jams. Our bridges are either, there's a 36% of them are either obsolete or unstructurally unsound mm. that we need to take care of before we have a catastrophe. So we need to start looking at this. So I commend them for saying that everything was on the table. So you think I, that includes, sorry for interrupting, you believe that includes the prospect of a gas tax hike? Uh, well, okay. if, if not, we'll find where, where else would we get the funding for it? Okay, so let's try this. Another tax. The um, Assembly Republican leader, mm -hmm. John Bramnick, is, uh, we'll talk to on the other half of, of this mm -hmm. program, is a big advocate of um, doing away with the uh, estate ta mm -hmm. tax. There's an estate tax sure. and an inheritance tax. Mm -hmm. um, Jersey is one of the most expensive states uh, in the country to die in, right? I heard that. You, sa you heard that, but also we debated this at the Business and Industry Association right. Forum that I moderated with you and the other legislative leaders. Right. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you said the problem 
that you had with doing away with the so-called state tax is that it brings in about how much money? About $440 million. And you said what? Tell me where well, the money comes it, from? It, 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 it's Tell from, me how you're going to make up the money? It, right. So you're going to have a, an additional hold in your budget. So, and these are things that we can talk about. See, our estate tax is actually an unfair to a certain amount that we have a threshold of $675 million. Uh, $675,000, excuse me. But what happens is, before that, you pay none. But once you hit that threshold, you pay from dollar one. I think that's an inequity that we need to resolve. And we probably could work at that, and we could probably absorb how do you phase it out, and we could work on that, and I think that's something I would be definitely be supportive, And but it has to be coupled with other things, like taking care of our road infrastructure. So these are all things that we're looking at and exploring. Like I said, we don't negotiate in public, but I think I, it's having a good debate and doing the right thing for the people of the state of New Jersey. And this is not for something that it should be for this governor. If we do a plan for the Transportation Trust Fund and, you know, and for the state, uh, getting rid of the state tax. It needs to be something long-lasting mm. for not just one governor, for many governors, and it should be for the people of the state of New Jersey. Can I get a quick comment on this? Uh, the, the Assembly passed, literally yesterday, I believe, um, Patrick Dagnan, the chair of the Assembly mm -hmm. um, Education Committee, right. is talking about the fact that uh, the park test, yes. standardized park test, mm -hmm. he argues there are lots of problems with it right. and that it should, there should be a three-year timeout, a moratorium right. on it. It should not be used to to measure teachers, performance should not be used to place students in, in a whole range of advanced right. placement situations, et cetera, et cetera. Did you vote for that? I, I voted yes for that, and I think it's very important for the reason being that it's very sound um, a policy that you implement it first and not start using it from day one even as a portion of assessments because there's many barriers that you have to be. It's a totally online uh, test. It's, it's something new for us. So something for us to work at it and make sure that it works, that we are teaching the proper curriculum. You have curriculum. concerns about the test? I, I do. And because I'm not too sure if for the standard curriculum that we have in the state of New Jersey, if this is co uh, compatible and are we teaching to this? And now if you take teachers that some of this is going to weigh on their performance, mm. what are they going to do? Teach to the test and now are children now going to be just geared to make sure they pass this test? Then the children are the ones that suffer. So a teacher should not have to be teaching how to take a test. We should be able to teach them so they learn and they can flourish and move to the second level. 30 seconds. Confident that you and the Senate president and your Republican colleagues together with the governor are going to take on the challenges that we have in the state with everything going on and all the negativity? Confident? I'm confident we have to. Listen, the, the people of New Jersey rely on us to make the tough decisions. That's why they have elected us. And for me, you will never get sound bites. You'll get honest answers all the time. Every time we've had you, uh, Mr. Speaker, that's what you've done. Thank you. Thank you. To see more one on one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We are pleased to be joined while we're in the Senate chamber. We're pleased to be joined by John Bramnick, who is the uh, Assembly Minority Leader. How are you doing? Good. You, you know, you, you got this reputation, well earned, for being the funniest member of the legislature, but these are not funny times. No, but you know, you don't take yourself seriously but you take the problems seriously. And so it's just hard work. You know, the bottom line is you have to work hard and you have to work with other people, but that doesn't mean you have to be mean or you have to take it personally or you have mm. to be hostile. So give me the funny part or the part that you find the humor in uh, with this pension situation. We're taping on the 24th. Uh, this is our legislative leader series in the Senate chamber. Uh, we're doing the 24th. The, the, the judge's decision yesterday Judge Mary Jacobson, on the pension. You give me a face already, yeah. Ms. Sullivan. She said the state has to put in the $1.56 billion <laughs> that was not in the budget last year. She said the governor didn't do it. We've had this discussion many times on Capitol Report. You said, the money's not there. What do you want us to do? But the judge said, find it. You say? Well, the courts are not really good at managing the people's money. For example, they came up with Abbott, the Abbott District decision. That's and public it, uh, school funding. Exactly. And what's happened over the years is there's been incredible 
uh, problems in trying to have the court and the legislature kind of work on something that meets this court standard. It's a constant battle. The courts really should say, hey, you're the elected officials, you're the governor, work it out. But don't, the more you order from the bench when you're not an elected official, the more problematic it is. We'll get it done, we'll fix it, but I don't, once the court starts ordering things, it becomes extremely complicated. What would you say to those assemblymen who say, you know, the court steps in, or the court stepped in in this case because they believed you weren't getting it done or you hadn't gotten it done, and so if the court didn't step in, you wouldn't get it done? If the court wanted to order, because the truth of the matter is our system is just not affordable. Private sectors have ended this pension system, this concept of like 25 years out, they can predict what the investment return is going to be. We're going to have to do the same thing here. We have to fix this system long term. It's the way Social Security is. I'd like to think that it's going to be perfect for the next 50 years, but everybody knows the numbers don't pan themselves out. So we might as well get to the table, sit down, figure out how we're going to save the pension system in the long term, and everybody's going to have to bite the bullet. Speaking about biting the bullet, um, the uh, Senate president sat right there um, and said, you know what? Democrats came up with a solution. Democrats in last year's budget said, Here is the, here's most of the money, a big chunk of the money for the pension payment for public employees. We need to raise taxes on millionaires. And if we did that, we would not be in this hole right now, you say? The discussion I hear every day from people is, hey, this state is too expensive. I'm going to move. My kids get out of college. Or the moment I have an opportunity to move to a state such as Florida or Pennsylvania or the South or Texas, they're going to do that. We're talking about millionaires, not middle class people. <laughs> the millionaires live six months in Florida and they stop paying income tax to New Jersey. You know, this is $70 billion left this state because we're too expensive. You know, that's a study that nobody really argues with. Here's the bottom line. We, if we continue to raise taxes, we're going to end up with more companies like Mercedes leaving the state. This is when we have to bite the... Going look, to Atlanta. Look, you go to one store because it's cheaper, okay? It's not that more complicated when you pick a state you're going to retire in or you're going to move to or you're going to open your business. This is real. You talk about serious stuff that's not funny? This is serious. You become less competitive, people are gone. So where are the cuts? So if we're not going to raise the millionaire's tax because you and the governor and the other Republicans are not going to support it. You've made that clear. Oh. The governor has been very consistent on this. He told us this in an interview we did on December 22nd, um, the WNET uh, NJTV interview. He was very clear, very consistent. He said, I'm not signing a millionaire's tax. He told me, he told many sure. people that. So he's not going to do it. Even right. if Democrats put it in the budget, not going to do it. So yeah. that means cuts have to come from somewhere, Assemblyman. Where would they come well, from? Well, first you have to change the pension system. Example, a new person in the pension system, those benefits can be curtailed and that new person could actually pay a little bit more. Now, for some reason... That won't make up the whole... No, but, but you have to start somewhere. The first thing you have to do is change the system and you're going to have to also Are change... Are the benefits too generous? No question about it. Now, on the people who've already got those benefits, we're locked in. and That was a commitment, a promise, well, a contract. It's a contract and they're going to get it. But for new people... For the unions or people to object as to a new person accepting a new package, I don't get that. That's number one. Also, the health benefits that we provide in the state, we need to make sure that those package of health benefits aren't so expensive that we can no longer afford them. So there's going to have to be some minor changes there as well, especially with new people in the system. Mm -hmm. And for people who have been in the system for a long time, you want fair health benefits, but not the most expensive in the country. Simon, so, mean, you told me in an interview, um, we had a legislative leaders yeah. panel discussion at the Business and Industry Association. It was a very good spirited discussion on a range of uh, business issues. Taxes came up. And while the Transportation Trust Fund issue, you said, don't worry, we'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. We're taping on the 24th. We hope it will be taken care of, but we don't know that. By the way, your prediction in taking care of that, before I ask you about the inheritance tax or the estate tax, um, do you believe that in fixing the, or dealing with the Transportation Trust Fund, which provides the dollars and cents to fix roads and bridges and mass transit, do you believe that will include a gas tax hike? If we have what's called tax fairness, the, most of the Democrats say raise the gas tax, raise the gas tax, raise the gas tax. 
in order to fund the Transportation Trust Fund, which is running out of money. And that might be part of a solution. But when you're talking about raising taxes, what's wrong with looking at or discussing a reduction in the inheritance or the estate tax, where people leave the state because it, they, the accountant tells them not to die here? What's wrong with looking at limiting? Explain that to people. Well, very simply, uh, there's a federal estate tax, and then some states have an inheritance tax or a state estate tax, like for the state. We have both an estate and an inheritance tax, and the, the level of where you pay is very low. So what's happening is you go to your accountant and I say, if you move to Florida, okay, not only will you have not a state income tax, but you also have a very minimum uh, in a state tax within the state. So you have to be competitive. So you have to, when you have a discussion as to the transportation trust fund, it should be a global discussion on trying to figure out ways to keep people here. If you have to raise the gas tax, if that's the ultimate decision of the legislature, you have to give something back. But Assemblyman, when we spoke to the Assembly Speaker, your colleague, uh, Vincent Prieto, he said, the problem with that is if you do away with the estate tax, if you do away with that estate tax, that revenue that we get, he says, is approximately 350 to $400 million. We have to find a way to make up that revenue. Like, <coughs> he said, excuse me, we're going to lose that money, and John Bramnick and others who argue that we should do away with that tax have to come up with another source of revenue, you say. Well, first, you have to stop the bleeding of people leaving the state and businesses leaving the state. I think the, the problem with the speaker's view is they don't realize we're in a crisis here. And the crisis is you've got to tell business and people we're on a different path in New Jersey. If you simply raise another tax and not do anything to give people some confidence to stay here, they're going to continue to leave. This is, I believe that the situation is dire. Uh, though you don't hear it, because business What situation? The that, situation that in terms of the are, economic climate of New looking, Jersey? I remember a recent survey showed more than 50% of the people in New Jersey are either thinking about or want to leave the state because of the how expensive it is. That's a crisis. And which, and which people are we talking about? What people are we talking about? Regular New Jersey people. And people who have the ability to move. Exactly. So, you know, I guess it's, what do you put, is it the cart or the horse? And in this case, it's you got to stop the bleeding. you got to give some incentive for people to stay in New Jersey and think we're at least heading down the right road. And all you do is say, well, let's raise the tax. Let's not lower any taxes. Let's not talk about any more cuts. Let's just do this. That is a serious, serious mistake. And if you want me to get serious, that's the one I'm serious about. So I mean, let me ask you this in the time we have left. Um, <clears throat> I've asked several of your colleagues this question. The mood in, in Trenton in the State House with the governor having the national ambitions that he has and, um, and dealing with what it's like to be a national candidate, but also trying to take care of business in the state. What impact has that had on you as a huge supporter of the governor, as a legislative leader, and as someone who knows that you need the governor's active participation to get things done? How engaged has he been? Well, I think he's very engaged, but this is my point. Do we ever give anybody the benefit of the doubt anymore? Is it always harsh criticism right away? The, There's no the, harsh criticism. Well, what I'm just what I mean is the, the governor of our state is considering running for president of the United States. That is service to our country and, in my judgment, service to the state. Everyone in this state house should understand that's not only good for New Jersey, but it's good for the country. And Meaning should, somebody's got to run for president, and you're saying if it's the governor of New Jersey, that's a good thing for the state. It is, and we should be supportive. And instead of us, at every turn, attacking each other, we should come out with one voice, and we should be proud of what Chris Christie's doing. The fact of the matter is, it's so political today. And not only that, part of it is the media, because the media wants a How story. How are we responsible? Well, because you don't do it as much yourself, because that's not your business. But this 24-hour news cycle where everyone's beating each other to the punch, they want something. They need a headline that, you know, is... Really, like, you see this all the time, breaking news. Everything in the world is not breaking news. You, you, years ago, breaking news was, was is breaking news. Chris Christie news. a good target? Oh, my God, of course. Because here's the other thing with Chris Christie, and you know, because I've seen that great interview you've done. He's one of the few people, and I've never seen this in politics. Most of us as politicians want to be liked. That's not what he cares about. And that is shocking to me as a politician. We're all presidents of the student council. You're an assemblyman. We want to be popular. That's not his deal. So that's one of the reasons I like him, because he's got the guts to be tough. So 
look, I'm proud of the guy. Not, not that I agree with him all the time. He yells at me too, okay? And, but you I too? yell back. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't mind I've that. been on the other end. Well, because you know what the truth is? He tells you what he thinks. Which is really refreshing to me in today's world. I think this guy's a special type leader, mm -hmm. and I think he's real smart. Scary smart. Uh, John Bramnick, who is not just the leader of the... Uh, Republicans in the Assembly, uh, but a very uh, strong advocate on behalf of the governor's policies, even though he doesn't agree all the time. Yeah. I want to thank you for joining us as part of our Legislative Leaders Series from Steve Adubato. Thanks for watching. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health, the New Jersey Education Association, New Jersey's Credit Unions, NJ Best, Fedway Associates, Community Education Centers, the Northeast Regional Council of Carpenters, and by these public-spirited organizations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. First steps, first day of school, first game. When their first day of college arrives, will you be able to pay for it? NJ Best can help. It is the 529 college savings plan for New Jersey families, and you can start saving today with as little as $25. To learn about NJ Best 529 college savings plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the investor handbook available at 877-755-GRAD or njbest.com.